This morning we're going to be talking about your term papers. Now, you finished, or you should have finished, or you should be working on your first four assignments for this class. The fifth one is the term paper that you should be starting, should be starting about now. So on your syllabus, you've got a list of potential term paper questions. Now I came up with this list in the summer. I like these questions. You might not. So at the very bottom, if you notice, it says, an exploration of your own choice, somehow related to English, books, stories, or reading. Now before you start your term paper, come and talk to me about it, so that I can discuss it with you. All right? So what we're going to be talking about is two different types of term papers. We're going to be talking about the exploratory term paper and the persuasive term paper. So I've got two of the questions on this sheet up on the board. The first one, what are the difficulties in translating poetry from one language into another? The second one, why were post-apocalyptic novels popular in the 20th century? This question here seems really difficult. This question here seems really easy. And in fact, it might be tempting to say, oh, I can answer this in like a page or a sentence. But in order to fully answer both of these questions, you're going to need to go into more depth than just simply writing down a sentence or two. So let's talk about the first one. The first one is going to be an exploratory term paper. You're not trying to persuade us of a point. You're not trying to argue Oscar Wilde was gay as through the importance of being earnest. That would be an argument. That would be a persuasive essay. This is exploring the difficulties of translating poetry. So if you were to do this, there's one or two different things you could do. You can either choose one foreign language and talk about the translation of poetry from that into English. If you know French, or if you know a different language, this might be, a, this might be advantageous to you. You could go into depth into this question. If you wanted to talk about translation in general, maybe you want to use several different examples, several different languages. But regardless, when you're talking about translating poetry, the difficulty of translating poetry, you're not just going to be reading poems and talking about their translations. Some of you have a uh, Korean literature and translation unit. Uh, for those of you who did that last year, at the very end of that package, there was an entire essay by one of the people who had translated a lot of the poems in that unit. And he talks about the difficulty of translating Korean poetry into English. If you want a copy of that, I can get it for you. But in every language, there's going to be works like this. There's going to be essays like this. So if you decide that you want to do this, you're going to need to have to find these. And you're going to do what's called a literature survey. So you're going to look at what translators say about translating poetry. You're going to read them. You're going to think about them. You're going to decide whether you want to focus on one language or multiple languages. And then you're going to come up with an outline, just like you do with a normal essay. The short persuasive essay that you've been writing, you should be coming up with an outline. The, this term paper, though, is going to be significantly longer. In past years, I've done a capstone assignment, which for 30-1s was about 20 pages double-spaced. I'm not expecting that much, because that was their assignment. That was their entire semester-long assignment. But certainly 10 pages double-spaced is in the ballpark of what we're looking for. Now, if you think about the length of that, and if, if you think about the depth of knowledge that you will require in order to answer this sort of question, you know that this is going to be a lot of work and a lot of research. I want to emphasize the research part of this. You're not just coming up with ideas from your own head. You're showing that you can get research from books, from the internet, from other sources, from people. Brother Anthony of Taize, this is the guy who translated a lot of this Korean poetry. You can actually email him, and he'll email you back. Before I started teaching Korean literature, I emailed him, and I said, would it be all right if I used some of the poems that you've translated in my classroom? Because you've got to do that for copyright reasons. And he replied, yes, absolutely, sure, no problem. People are interested in talking to students, especially when it comes to a topic like this. Because translators don't always get all the glory. When you're translating poetry, the most important, the, the people that, that um, get all the credit are usually the poets, not the translators. So they like to talk, and you can find all this information on the internet. 
So you're going to pick. You're going to do one language, you're going to do multiple languages. You're going to read poems that have been translated into English from that language. You're going to look at different translations of that poem. Again, I'm coming back to Korean, but in that article that's at the back of that Korean literature handout, there is one poem called The Zalias, and there's about five or six different translations. And the translator for that, he actually explains what each of the translations do. Some of them are very literal, some of them are more flighty, some of them are more realistic. I'd encourage you to take a look at that if you're considering this option at all. But this is just an example of an exploratory essay. You're exploring the idea of translation. This is very much related to English. The second one, why were post-apocalyptic novels popular in the 20th century? So you probably don't know this, but they were. They really were. The entire idea of the world ending was incredibly popular, popular in the 20th century. And to answer this question in short, it's because of the Cold War. And people were afraid that they were going to die. That's why they wrote about it. You write what you know. And if you're living under the fear of nuclear weapons pointed at your city, that's what you write. After the Cold War ended, there wasn't a lot of novels that were written in this vein anymore. But for some reason, it's coming back. Post 9-11, all of a sudden we have all these films and all these books that are again bringing back this genre. We've got The Road, we've got The Book of Eli. The Road has a film version of it. There's um, Right at Your Door, which is a story of a, um, a film about a dirty bomb that goes off in Los Angeles. We have this entire new genre where the world is destroyed by zombies and by, um, by aliens. So the idea of, of the apocalypse is looming large in our minds once more. So that's the short answer. But the long answer, in order to really answer this question, you're going to have to look at the history. You're going to have to look at the history of the 20th century you're going to have to explore why people thought they were going to die. You're going to have to look at specific authors who created post-apocalyptic literature and talk about why they thought the world would end. Now, this one in terms of content and the, content and the authors will be more difficult because authors, unlike translators, don't like to talk to the common folk as much. However, this is a very popular topic amongst people who are... Um, scholars of science fiction. You should be able to find college professors, you should be able to find books and articles about this topic online. So what you do is you would look at some of the post-apocalyptic stories we've studied in this class over the last couple of years. The Chrysalids, back in grade 10, post-apocalyptic, written in the 60s, I believe. That's a good one. You could talk about the influence of that. You could look at, like I said, The Road by Cormac McCarthy, came out in the 20, 21st century. So there's lots of different texts that you can look at. And then what you're going to do is you're going to talk about the intersection between the books and history. So you're not just going to talk about the books. You're not just going to talk about the history. But you're going to talk about the books in their historical contexts. So if a book was written in this year and in the year prior to that, there was the, um, the threat of nuclear warfare from Cuba then you could link those together, if there's a link to be made. But this one, you need to persuade the reader that there is a link. There is a link between post-apocalyptic novels and history. So there's lots of topics on here. Like I said, I've got 40 here. You can come up with something that you're interested in. My favorite that I think that nobody is going to pick is, of what use is Shakespeare to a farmer? I love this topic. But one of the reasons that it's probably not going to be very popular is because, first of all, in order to talk about Shakespeare intelligently, you need to have read a lot of Shakespeare. And for a lot of students such as yourselves, Shakespeare Shakespeare's challenging. So you might not want to do that. But it's a fascinating topic because people like me, people who are scholars, say that Shakespeare should be universally accessible. It has universal themes and universal values. So if that's true, then it should be useful to somebody who's a farmer. And given where we're living, this could be an interesting topic. I look forward to the day when a brave soul chooses this and decides to write about it. Who has the final say in a book's interpretation, the author or the reader? Again, this is another persuasive essay where you're going to be talking about the interaction between the book and the reader. You're going to be talking about interpretation, which is what we do a lot in English. Does the author get to say this is what happens in the book? 
Or does the reader get to say, this is what happens in the book? And you'd look at two different theoretical approaches to literature in order to answer this question. You could use specific textual examples again. But this one is more of a, is more of a theoretical approach. It's more of a literary criticism type of assignment. So there's lots of choices, depending on what you want to do. What I really want to emphasize is that you need to find something that's interesting to you. You can't write it if it's going to be boring. So if none of these appeal to you, come up with your own choice. Come and talk to me, and we'll talk about what you want to do. We'll figure something out. But since this is going to be your biggest assignment in this class, if you're not interested in it, it's going to be very, very challenging and difficult for you. Now, in terms of actually writing it, you need to get your research first. You pick your topic, you get your research, you understand the research. That's going to be the first step. You find books, you find articles, you contact people. You can use the phone here to call people at universities, even if it's long distance. We will make that happen if you want to actually talk to somebody who can help you out or who can steer you in the right direction. Maybe you want to take a day and go to the U of L and see if there's any professors there that are willing to help you out. On university websites, they have all the names of their professors and they usually have interests, where their interests lie, their research interests. So you might be able to find a guy at the U of L who is very interested in post-apocalyptic literature, who would be able to be a great resource for you. And I highly encourage you to do this. If you go on to university, and if you decide to pursue an honors in English or a master's degree in English, you will be working very closely with a professor. This is an exciting opportunity to, to get to do this now while you're still in high school. And they will want to help you because they're going to think that this is pretty cool. This is a high school student asking me about this very difficult or very complex question. By and large, they would want to help. So you get your research. You summarize your research. You know what the research says. Then what you need to do is you need to sit down and write it. Barrel through it. Just write, 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 write until it's done. You edit later, you write first. Then you post it online and you get feedback from people. And while you're waiting for feedback from your peer editors, you go through it yourself. So, that's the assignment. Any questions? All right, good luck.